all that we do for us. We thank God for every love, token, every gift, every offering, every sacrifice. And trust me, I know this year was a sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we thank God for you. Uh, you make us preach and teach the way we do. And we, we're praying for conviction for those that did not take in consideration of bringing a gift to their leaders. But throughout the year, we've done all of the things that we wanted to do. And we overlooked that this time of year is just like Christmas. It always comes. And, and, and trust me, Nestle, let us know who who have been a blessing to us. Who said thank you? You know how many of you were in the uh, in the uh, what, what we just come out of appreciation. Yeah. You remember he said about the one leper that came back out of the team yeah. and said thank you. Yeah. I want you to consider that. How did you say thank you this year? Oh. How did you say thank you for all of the times we've been there? For all of the times we bailed you out, for all of the times we rented our own pocket and gave you finances, but we didn't have to give. We gave you church money. We gave you our money. Amen. Think about how you said thank you. And ask God, God, are you pleased with me? Come on. My God. The Bible says if you give a prophet a cold drink of water. Come on. In the name of a prophet. Yeah. Of a prophet. You read what? A prophet's reward. We got to learn out. God told me something. We know how to receive, but we don't know how to give. Come on, yes. And we're going to have to struggle with it. And I know it's a tough struggle for many people. And that's why you'll stay in the position that you're in. You won't be able to work yourself out of it. How many people have been working for 10 years and, and you don't see a whole lot of achievement? Yes. Because you're not going to work yourself out of poverty. Come on, come on. God has already made a way for you to come out of poverty. Yes. You either have to accept the way or stay in the place that you're in. Come on. And we're learning this thing. We're learning this thing by bumping our heads. Somebody say bumping our heads. Hey, yeah, we want to minister today. Let me see if I can go here. Uh, uh, for the last two nights, y'all, y'all help me. I was really blessed. I was really blessed. And, and the first night, the sermon was, uh, I believe, Who Are You? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and the second night, I believe that the sermon was working with no results. Uh, and, and, and what I did is I went home more than, than listening to the delivery of the preacher. I was listening to the deposit of the preacher. And I was trying to hear what the Holy Ghost was saying to us collectively as a body of believers. I was trying to find out what the Spirit of God was saying to this church. Is there anybody in here? I had a young lady sent me a, 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 a chat message and she asked me something. She says in the Matthew chapter number 11 verse number 15, she says Apostle, who is the ear? And I said, God, who is the ear? And, and God said, the ear is those that are within the confounds of the church. Now watch this here. That have the ability to hear God. I, I just need to ask you something here. Have you heard from him lately? Ain't nobody saying Saying nothing in the church now. Look at somebody say, have you heard from him lately? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need you to understand something. I need you to understand something here today. I believe that God does not send these particular giftings into the church to entertain us, but to empower us and to cause us to take the direction of God in this season in our lives. Is there anybody in the church? Look at your neighbor and say, are you in the church or are you just holding a pew? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If any man be in Christ, in the body of believers, he is a new creature. God does not make you partially new. He makes you totally new. Well, why if he makes me totally new upon my confession, why am I not manifesting the new immediately? I'm glad you asked. Because you have to discover the new that is in you. But you can only discover the new that is in you by two method or two methods. The one is is by the Spirit of God. He reveals to you who you are, and the next is by the Word of God. And it helps you to comprehend who you are in God so you can stop being who you have been. I feel like preaching today. I want to talk to the church today from the subject commanded to go. Uh huh. Commanded to go. I want to read from two passages of scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter number twenty-eight, verse number nineteen, and Mark chapter number sixteen, verse number 
15. I really want you to understand this today. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Or the word nations there is the same word as people. Uh, people of all nationality. And it says baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now I need you to understand Mark chapter number 16. I know I'm moving a little fast today, but Mark chapter number 16 verse number 15 says for he saith unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature it means that every living person has a right to hear the gospel, well what is the gospel the gospel is the death, the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you not only tell him that my savior died for my sins uh, and my savior was buried in a borrowed tomb but on the third day he got up and anybody who believes on him can be saved or they can also get up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get up out of your condition. You can get up out of your sinful lifestyle. You can get up out of the identity nature that you've been walking in and God is really trying to show us something here. The word my God commanded it means an authority order given by God. Look at somebody and say God said go. God said go. Uh -huh. I'm going to preach it in a few minutes. God said go. We received an authority command. Well, who received it? We, the disciples received it. The, the, the believers received it. Well, aren't we disciples and believers? Yes. Ain't nobody saying nothing today. Yes. Well, he gave them the authority command to go. Why? Because they had been born again. They had been converted. They had became believers in him. Well, well what is a disciple? I'm glad you asked me. It's a student or follower of a particular kind of teaching. And, and, and in our Bibles, they were following and they were students of the teaching of Christ Jesus. Well, what is a believer? It's one who believes in the teaching of a certain individual. When, when, when we are believers, we believe in the teachings of God through Christ. But not only the teachings of Christ, watch this, not only the teachings of Christ we believe in, but we live by them. We live by the teachings of Christ. We not only live by the teachings of Christ, but we share them with others because it's our conviction that we are living the right way according to the will of God. I wish I had a church today that would just get with me. But well, why are you pushing me like this? I'm glad you asked. Because the word go is the same word as sit. It means commanded to do a thing on the behalf of God. And once you got saved, once you have been taught, once you have been built up, every single believer in the church has a responsibility to God to go out and make somebody else a disciple. Make somebody else a believer. I believe that the word of God came to us concerning this matter. I feel like preaching. I believe that we got almost everything right except one thing. God has empowered us. God has trained us. God has built us up, but we are not going. We are sitting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How can you tell? Because I don't see the fruit of your work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I believe that that's why God was saying we are doing a whole lot of working, but we are not seeing any results. Well, what are results? I'm glad you asked me. The word result is a powerful word, and it means this here. It means a desired or favorable outcome at the end of something. We understand something that if we live right and if we witness right, the desired end is that we're going to see other saints get saved, other people come to the church, other people begin to preach, but we are so entangled with our own mess that we can't even witness to anybody else even though we're experiencing the goodness, the power, and the deliverance of the Holy God. Ain't nobody saying nothing now. But I'm trying to tell you something. He said, I have one problem with new creation. I have one thing against her. He said, the problem that I have with her and the thing that I have against her is she's not giving soul winning her all. She's not really getting out winning soul. She's not really going out telling about the goodness of God. God said you should be witnessing in your workplace. You should be confirming in your work. Not on their time. No, 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 no. But 
but you got a lunch break. You, you got another break. You got coming into the building and going up out of the building. And you got to tell somebody, you're the light in your workplace. But my God, what good is the light that has lost its shining? And he says, that's the problem I got with a Jones. That's the problem. You're doing a great work. But we're not getting the result that I desire. He said, he that wins souls is wise. He said, I want to see my church feel. But it's going to take the people in it to feel it. When you get excited. Can I preach like I feel that? You know what we're sharing in the workplace as Christians? You know what we're sharing in our community? We're sharing what we're going through. We're not sharing what we're coming through. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you're discouraging the people that God has assigned to you. Watch this here to convert. You're telling them about what's going on in your home, what's going on in your marriage, what's going on in your life, what's going on with your children. And they thought Christians had a better life. But what you should have been saying, I'm dealing with something. But guess what, God? God is still good. God is bringing me through it. God is turning this thing around. You got to turn your negative seed into positive seed. You're speaking too negative about everything. You need to start planting positive seed. Plant negative seed, you reap a negative harvest. You get negative results. But if you God, I feel like preaching. You ever make up your mind to be positive in negative times? Ain't nobody saying nothing. The first word is do you know who you are? Yes, I'm a disciple and I'm a believer. What with, with, with discipleship and with being a believer becomes responsibility. Somebody say we got some responsibility. Uh, let me break it down. The word responsibility, it's the ability given by God to respond, act, or do. Let me show you something. God said you already got what you need in order to respond to this commandment that I've given you. Somebody say that's a commandment, go. See, God has commanded us to go, but we're still moving in disobedience, even though we shot ka 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 kando no osa. We're doing all of that and still moving in disobedience because we're not moving in the things of God. My God, my God. You really want to bless God? Go crazy and start winning folks and bringing folks like you're the lost. Put your knees on the side and lift up somebody else's knees. Greater than your own. Say, yeah, I'm going through. But you know how I'm going to deal with the devil? I'm going to witness and win everybody I can get. I'm going to bring folks in here like I have lost my... Listen, you already a member of the church. I can't ride you this week. I'm going to get folks who ain't got no ride. I'm going to get folks who I've been uh, witnessing to, who I've been playing, see, and fill your car with them and bring them into the house of God and stand back, stand still, and See the salvation of the Lord. Watch God show up and show out. You got to give him something to work with if you want him to work. Good God Almighty. You got to learn how to speak differently. When you speak differently, you're going to read differently. I believe that we're in, a, we're in the season now where he's trying to create new minds. Because we're in a time that we've never experienced now. We're in a time, but if we think different, watch this, we can operate even in these times that we are facing. We can still operate from a victorious platform. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Let me help somebody up in here. You might be going through in your personal life, going through in your home, going through in your marriage. I've been through too still got my wife happily married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I wasn't confessing that mess that you confessed. I wasn't running around telling everybody what I'm going through. Bringing shame, disrespect, and embarrassment to my house. I went to God. God the only one to help me. Or I went to somebody who has some wisdom. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Somebody who was wise and not dumb. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I went to somebody who had some wisdom and they spoke into my spirit and gave me some instruction. And if I follow the instructions, I get the result. If I do what God said, I get the result that God talked about. I got some good news. Happy, hey, y'all just need to shut up. Oh, my God. 60% just need to shut up. And blessings will hit your house. Hit your house, hit your life like never before. Something as simple as it's just shutting up. Ain't nobody saying nothing. But I got a right to force my opinion. Not when you're killing something you want. Not when you're killing something you want. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to kill it with my own mouth. See, the Bible says the power of life and death lies in the world, in the tongue. So the enemy can use my tongue to destroy my life. Yes. Woo. Wow. 
I just somebody say he ain't gonna use me. He ain't gonna love. He's not gonna use me. You got to love.